you guys. Uh, this is a video describing the CNC mini mill that I am selling on eBay. Uh, this is a DNM for machining center. These guys made educational uh, setups like this for students to learn how to do CNC on. Um, this one is based, it, it, it's basically a Sherline 5000 CNC. Um, it's almost identical, except for this has a enclosure around it. You can see that these uh, windows are nice and uh, that'll that'll keep most of the chips inside instead of going all over your room. And each of these doors has a magnetic proximity switch. So if you're big into safety like you should be, um, you can use those to shut things down when you open the doors. It also has this uh, programming panel here. I You can try to reverse engineer that and use it or you could just use your own thing. Um, I, I have a similar machine over here that I converted. It had a panel on it and I just it doesn't even do anything other than the power switch. But uh, I'm going to pull this thing out and give a uh, a description of the details that it has. Alright, I have pulled the actual uh, robotic parts out of the machine and uh, pardon for the mess in my shop. Um, so to start off, these are NEMA 23 motors. Um, they are from Vexta, which make really, really nice motors. I mean, these things are on medical devices and have, they're made to the highest standard. Um, I have personally had to shop for these Vexta, Vexta motors and they are several hundred dollars per motor, so these are really nice motors. Um, the translation is done with a regular uh, screw. It's a really nicely made screw, but it's not an Acme screw, it's just a triangular thread. And uh, it has an anti-backlash nut built into it, right uh, here. That is actually a bushing with a ridged edge and there's a, a circular or a cylindrical portion that extends into the material in here and this uh, this screw is a Phillips you just loosen that and then rotate that little uh, pointy piece of metal there and it digs into one of the grooves of the anti-backlash nut and then you tighten it down and the backlash and the anti-backlash nut stays in there and then there's another threaded portion inside of this carriage that uh, the screw also engages with. Um, so the other motor is the exact same except for it has a stamp from the, manufa or the manufacturer of this educational bundle. The spindle motor is a, let's see, 90 volts DC. And you can probably see the model number on that, but I'll put it in the listing as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and include two belts with this because I had some extras. But uh, it just you you loosen these two screws and slide it until it's uh, tight. And it has this nice. I think these are called. Uh, I forget what these kind of plugs are called, but it has a corresponding port on the enclosure, so you don't have to. Uh, that's a huge convenience from personal experience. Um, so these XY ways have uh, jibs. You can see them. That is the jib, and it's a tapered jib. And the the the, the engagement of the jib is controlled by this little bent piece of metal. There's a set screw right inside of here. You loosen that up and it unclamps this piece of metal and allows you to slide the jib in and out. Uh, the jib seems to be made out of some sort of uh, polymer or uh, ceramic material. It's very light but it's very rigid and it seems like it might be designed to retain oil somehow. 
but uh, the 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 ways are made out of aluminum. Um, let's see if I have a magnet around here. I'll get one later. But this is aluminum. This is aluminum. The motor couplings are aluminum. The only thing that's not aluminum is this uh, Z axis, which I believe is cast iron, like most ways are. But the Z axis also has a jib mechanism. There's a view of the Z axis jib. I sure hope it's not pronounced gib. I'm making a fool of myself, but so I will flip it over so you can see the underside. Ooh. On the underneath side of the Y or the X axis, you can see the screw extends all the way through there. Now, uh, this thing comes with lots of magnetic proximity switches already kind of wired into the motors. So they have different areas, like right here is one uh, magnet for the sensor to engage with. I flip this thing back up real quick. Speaking of, this thing weighs 30 pounds exactly. Um, just what you're seeing right here. The enclosure, I'm not sure what that weighs, I'll have it in the listing, but uh, let's see, what was I gonna talk about? Uh, yes, the motor couplings. These are aluminum, and when you remove these four screws, you'll be able to pull the motor right off. There is a coupler that kind of looks like this. It's like a spline type engagement, if I can focus. There we go. The reason I have these is because I thought that I had lost the original couplings that were inside of here, and I actually 3D printed this after m measuring the, uh, the the splines that are attached to the, the screw and the motor axle axis. And I <laughs> these actually work, so I'm going to include these in case you want an additional set or something like that, but whatever. So the spindle has like a drawbar that goes all the way through um, and then at the end it has a taper inside of it I'll have to put the, the 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 size of the taper in the listing but you can see there's a little hole for you to put in your wrench to uh, hold the thing still as you're changing your cutter, cutting tool um, all right, all right, the last thing I want to talk about with this uh, listing is the enclosure in the back. Um, there's a nice spacious area behind the machine with a door that swings down, which I'll show you in a moment, but on the back we have lots and lots of fuses, fuse holders a fused power inlet with an on-off switch, the serial communication ports, I assume, um, and if we open it up, dun, 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 dun. here's all the original uh, circuitry. So we've got three stepper motor drivers, the spindle driver, the transformer for transforming AC to DC, the rectifier for doing the same thing, capacitor also works in triad with those. Uh, there's got a, it's got a pretty nice fan which runs on uh, mains voltage, I believe, that keeps these things nice and cool. This, I'm not real sure what that is. MTR int, uh, motor integration board, maybe? I don't know. But uh, 
all of these cables come down to a point right here where you can see them all. And there's a tray that goes through the bottom of the machine and then pops up underneath of here for you to connect with your panels or the control panel and these magnetic switches for the door. Um, there's a hole right there that the, the motor for the forward and back direction kind of recesses into because it doesn't fit unless they have that hole, <laughs> apparently. Oh, and there are the ports where the motor, spindle, and uh, sensors plug in. Now, all of this circuitry is incredibly old and outdated. I mean, I, if, I, if I were buying this, I would keep the motor driver because it'll still work. But these stepper motor drivers, I don't know if these are, I don't know how much stepper motor driver technology has improved since the 90s, which is I assume when this was made. Uh, but you can get some really nice stepper motor drivers that might work way better than these. And uh, probably would get some sort of modern controller, maybe a ethernet smooth stepper which is what I use on mine, or some other popular one. I forgot to show this board, whatever that is. Uh, looks like... I don't know what the hell that is. Make your own assessment. But like I said, nice and spacious, and this rope keeps the thing from falling in, or falling down super easy to get in here and check things you just put it back up and I just have been using a single screw but you can put all of the yeah, screw the hole I've just been using a single screw but you could put all of them in around the edge of this just like eight or something all right oh, oh before I get I forget there is a couple pieces that go to this unit that uh, I don't know where the coupler is for this piece right here. It's meant to go over top of the uh, motor like that. But there's a coupling piece in there that I can't find for the life of me. But it, I'm going to include this just in case you want to cobble something together yourself. Um, all right, and we're back at the mini mill. I got one more thing I want to show you over here. This is, uh, I just removed this motor, which, here we go. So, on the end of each motor, there is a splined coupler, and there's an identical one inside of there, and, uh, there's two counter sunk or bore whatever there are holes underneath here that you can take these screws out of and then remove the coupler so now we have a good view of the basic uh, mechanism of the, the, the bearing action of the, the machine now what we have is a the, the threaded rod leads into a, a bushing. It, this bushing rests against a shoulder on the threaded rod, and this, this piece is screwed on to the machine with a single bolt or screw down there. And this, this shoulder and this coupler are the only thing that restrain this uh, axis and the linear direction. So it's important to make sure that you squeeze these things together really tight before you tighten that set screw. Um, I mean, I, I've seen some videos, which I'll link in the description, of this, this machine just eating its way through a block of aluminum. And I was truly impressed by what I saw. 
I, I was originally a little bit skeptical about no bearings, but I mean, some of the best materials or some of the best uh, machines in the world are just steel sliding on steel. I mean, my South Bend lathe, it's like a revered machine and there's, there's a precision to flat surfaces scraping. If you ever feel like going down a rabbit hole, uh, look up scraping and machinists. All right, but but this uh, same mechanism is used in this axis, and I guess one last thing I haven't showed you is the Z axis. So the Z axis has a little bit larger screw, very fine pitch, and a brass uh, coupler that connects it to the carriage, and. Uh, There is a bearing. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to take this Z axis off and then I'll be right back with you. And we're back with the motor mounting flanges removed on all three axes. First, I will show you that the axis does move. It's pretty smooth. You can even see that that's moving, but it is moving. Okay. And I was correct about the Z axis. There is a bearing up here. It's a single thrust bearing along with what appears to be a, sorry for the camera, a metal bushing. This is all one piece with a brass insert um, underneath of it. So when you rotate that, the brass just acts as a plain bearing. I'm guessing that it's uh, that the threads are faced off on the surfaces that are inside there and keeps it constrained in the side to side direction and the thrust bearing keeps it constrained in the Z direction. Sorry about the focus.